Section 3.1.3, Equations and Inequalities, we're going to be finding multiple solutions to a system of equations. And so we're going to solve a system of linear and nonlinear equations. Now some of this should be review. In the past, in some of the other math classes, they've gone over how to solve a system of linear equations. And the primary way that you guys solve those would be through the substitution method. And essentially with the substitution method, you plug what a variable equals in one equation into the other equation. And that's where you hear like the whole quote unquote set the two equations equal to each other. But the only way that you can do that is if they both equal the same variable. But we're going to kind of examine that a little bit further. The second method that's probably not covered too much, we call this the elimination method. And it actually derives a little bit from linear algebra. And the idea there is you can add one equation to another equation to create a new equation. You're allowed to do that. And so because you're able to add one equation to the other equation to create a new equation, we can use that idea to eliminate a variable. Because remember, when there's two variables in an equation, we can't solve for one. But if we can make the equations or manipulate the equations a certain way into which I add them together to create a new equation, and there's only one variable, then I can solve for it. And so we're going to introduce that and we're going to see this a little bit. So let's get to our first problem. So here we go. Example number one, it says solve each system algebraically. So I could technically graph this. And if I were to graph this, you know, I can get my uh, solutions that way. Also, if I were to graph it, notice how I have X and Y. Well, that means that my solution needs to include both x and y. The other equations that we're dealing with only had x, so that's why my answer only had x. But these solutions have x and, or these equations have x and y, and we consider both of these simultaneously, and so that's why my answer is still where they intersect, but it's the point in which they intersect, both the x and the y value in which they intersect. Now in this situation here, we will use the substitution method. And the reason being, we have a variable by itself. Typically, in any scenario in which you have a variable by itself, 99% of the time it's gonna be a substitution method. And the main reason is that I could substitute one variable for the other. And so in this instance, it says y equals x squared, and I have y equals eight minus x squared. Well, both of these equations equal the same thing. So I can substitute what this y equals, which is x squared, in for this y right here, because the y values are the same. And so I plug x squared in for y. Now, to me, when I look at this, before I do any other form of solving, I see an x squared. Immediately, my brain should be like, Pshaw! all these properties of quadratics. So. Um, first, I want to combine these x squareds together, so I'm going to add x squared to both sides, and so I get 2x squared. It looks like it will be very easy for me to get x squared by itself. So if I divide both sides by 2, I get x squared equals 4. I can use that square roots method to get x by itself. So I can take the square root to both sides, and I get x equals plus or minus 2. Now remember, we said we're finding both the x and the y. So now I have to take the this both the positive two and the negative two and plug it back in. Now it doesn't matter necessarily which equation you plug it back into, we just need to plug it back in. And so I'm gonna choose the top equation because it seems easiest. And so plugging in the two and the negative two, well, two squared is four, negative two squared is also four, so this is where organization needs to be key here. My x value was two, it gave me four for my y value. My x value was negative two, it gave me four for my y value. So that's why my point will be two, four, and negative two, four. 
and we can take a look at our graph here. Notice the point that they intersect is negative 2, 4 and positive 2, 4. Let's look at another one. Now in this example here, there is no variable by itself. So if this happens, we need to spend time getting a variable by itself. So I'm going to use this equation right here, this x plus y equals 1, and I'm going to get a variable by itself. So if I subtract x on both sides, y equals 1 minus x. Well, now a variable is by itself. So since it's by itself, I can plug what y is into the other equation. So I can plug what y is into the other equation and I can solve for y. And so plugging in, instead of writing y, y is 1 minus x. So there's my 1 minus x. Now I know you guys are looking at this. We have to remember whenever it's something squared like this, it means that there's two of them, which means this will distribute 1 times 1, 1 times negative x, negative x times 1, negative x times negative x, and that'll give us that. I still have my x squared, I still have equals 13. Combining like terms and making it neater. So x squared and x squared gives me 2x squared. There's the minus 2x and there's the 1. Minus 13 on both sides. So I get this statement. Well, there's a 2 in common, so divide everything by 2. Let's just make it easy. And so divided by 2, divided by 2, divided by 2, I get this statement here. Now let's check the factors to see factors of six that add to negative one, negative three, and positive two. So x minus three, x plus two, which means setting each one equal to zero, I get x equals three and x equals negative two. I have to plug these back in. So plug in three back in. And I'm gonna use this top equation because it's easier. So I plugged in three for x, and I plugged in negative two for x. You do it separately. Get y by itself, so minus three on both sides, you get y is negative two. Get y by itself, so add two to both sides, and I get y equals three. So my point, when I had three, I got negative two. When I had negative two, I got three. And then if I graph it, negative two, three, three, negative two. Those are my solutions. So our third and last example, solve each system algebraically. Now this looks a little different. First, there's no variable by itself, right? I mean, it's not like x equals, y equals. Secondly, this would be kind of difficult to get a variable by itself, right? I mean, I'm gonna have all these like awkward square roots. Cause if I like, let's say if I wanna get x squared by itself, I'm gonna subtract the two y squared and then square root both sides. And so I'll get the square root of 11 minus 2y squared. That's kind of awkward. And so using the substitution method, granted, it would still work, but it's definitely not optimal. And so because it's not the optimal way of doing things, we're going to use this new method called elimination. Now, I previously said the elimination method, there's a rule in algebra that when we have a system of equations, we're allowed to add two equations together to create a new equation. Now, it is only strategic to do that when, when we add those two equations together, something disappears, like a variable disappears. Because if I'm just adding equations together and I'm just still getting a bunch of x's and y's everywhere, it doesn't help us. And so typically, what we might have to do is we have to multi or, uh, manipulate the equations in such a fashion to where our coefficients are what we call opposites, meaning the, con the, the whatever the number is, it's the same, but the signs are different. So like the number here is one and that's a three, those aren't opposites. But here it's a positive two and that's a negative two. These are opposites, that's what we want. Now the reason why we want that is because when I add these together to create that new equation, negative 2y and positive 2y, they're going to cancel out. 
And so because these are opposites, I'm able to add these together. And so by adding them together, one plus three x squared gives me four x squared. These will add to zero equals an 11 plus 25 gives me 36. Well, now I have this new equation. I, I got rid of the zero because we don't need it. But now I can get x by itself. And so I can divide both sides by four. And then now I can take the square root to both sides and I'm gonna get x is plus or minus three. Remember, when we take the square root, we get plus or minus three. So now I can take these values and I can plug them back in. And so plugging positive three and negative three back into my equation, I'll start with just the top one because it seems to, why not? I mean, it's been my pattern. You could choose to plug it back into the bottom one if you want, it doesn't really matter. But plugging in positive three, so three squared, that becomes nine. So I can subtract nine on both sides. And I'm gonna get two y squared equals two, divide both sides by two, and I get y squared equals one. Square root to both sides, and I get y equals plus or minus one. So that means when I plugged in positive three, it gave me a positive one and a negative one. So that means when I write my point, when I plugged in three, I got positive one. When I got three, I got negative one. And so those are my answers. But I didn't plug in the negative three yet, so I have to do that as well. And so plugging in the negative three, well, once again, that negative three squared, that becomes nine. So subtract nine on both sides. Well, notice that ends up giving me the same thing here. Well, that just means the result's gonna be the same, right? If I do 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 do, do all the math, that's gonna give me y equals plus or minus one. So when I plugged in negative three, it gave me a positive one and a negative one. And so negative three, positive one, negative three, negative one. When I plugged in negative three, it gave me positive one. When I plugged in negative three, it gave me negative one. So these four values here are going to be my solution. Let's look at it graphically. Negative three, one, check. Negative three, negative one, check. Three, negative one, check. Three positive one. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned how to solve a system of equations, both linear and nonlinear. And then we examined the elimination and substitution method. So as a reminder, the substitution method, we usually want a variable by itself. Once the variable is by itself, you can take that and substitute it into the other equation for what it equals. The elimination method, it states that we're allowed to take two equations, add them together to create a new one. But we want at least one of those variables to be opposites of each other so that when I add them together, they eliminate. Now there's one little thing that I just wanna show you on that real quick. Let's just say hypothetically I had x plus two y equals 11 and uh, x, we'll say three x uh, plus y equals four. And I wanted to be able to use the elimination method to do this, right? I could technically do substitution, subtract three X on both sides, I get a variable by itself. But let's just say I wanted to use the elimination method. Well, I either want the X's or the Y's to be opposites. It doesn't matter which one. Choose which one you want, but just make, you know, like, let's say you want to make it the X's. So the other rule in elimination that we're allowed to is we're able to multiply any equation by any number. So if I wanted my x's to be opposites, well, this needs to be what number to make it the opposite of positive three? In this instance, it'd be negative three. So I can multiply my entire equation by negative three. So that means I'd have to distribute that negative three all the way through to every single value, but then it would become negative three x minus six y equals negative 33. So now when I add those equations together, the x's would cancel out. I would get minus five y, and that would equal negative 29. And then I'd be able to solve for y from there. So the elimination method, just showing you out that 
It's just another way for us to be able to solve a system of linear and nonlinear equations. We just remember that the variables have to be the same, right? So I can't add an x squared to an x. That won't work. And I want them, the coefficients to be opposites. So in this instance, for me to cancel out a positive 3, I needed that negative 3. So this does conclude our lesson. If you do have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.